Hello and welcome to another Stamp with Amy K Facebook Live and today I'm going to show you how I made a card with the Fond of Autumn stamp set bundle from the Stampin' Up! July to December 2022 mini catalog that uh, just started here at the beginning of July um, for being able to order it. So it's a really cool set and um, I'm going to try to scooch my camera down just a little because it looks like I'm a little bit high up on the page but we'll see. Hopefully it'll work out all right. <laughs> okay. Um, so, but it, like I said, it's a, it's a really cute set, or a really good set, a really good fall set. Initially, when I looked at it in the catalog, I will tell you that I was not as overwhelmed with excitement about it as I could have been um, until I actually used it. And then I realized like the brilliance of the way the dies are designed. So um, I'm going to show you a little bit about how they work and show you how awesome it is. And uh, glad that everybody's here joining. So hi, Jackie and Karen and Bonnie taking a late lunch. All right, I like it. And Pam is here as well. And Renee. So thanks for hopping in today. So this is the card we're going to be making. Um, like I said, it's not terribly difficult, but I'll show you, like I said, the, the dies are really what um, I'm in love with on this, this uh, stamp set bundle. I mean, I do love all things fall. So, you know, it's, that's all good. But like I said, the dies are really cool. So, hey, Trudy, thanks for joining today too. So this is the stamp set. It is called, obviously, Fond of Autumn. And it's got the little banner in here. And it's got a couple of sentiments that are kind of the curvy ones that'll fit into the banner. And uh, there's a die for the banner. There's a flower image, leaf, uh, acorn that are individual images. And there are dies to cut all of those out. Um, and there are some other sentiments too as well. So again, just a really good stamp set. But the dies are really what I love about it. So Okay, so this is one of the dies, and of course this is only 90%, so it's not going to show it exactly correctly because it's smaller on the cover, but that cuts out this larger image, so you can stamp it all as one piece, cut the whole thing out, color it, you know, not color it, do whatever you want with it. Or the other thing you can do is take this die, and it also fits, so this is one we're going to be using today, and again, it doesn't look right on the cover because the cover is slightly smaller than the actual stamp set is, but this die actually fits um, this set image as well and it cuts it into three individual uh actually even more than three one two three four individual um little die cut pieces so rather than normally when you get a larger image like this you kind of have to hack it apart with your paper snips and all that sort of thing um and it doesn't sometimes cut as nicely as it could this one is actually designed to cut it all out for you and again this is the one we're going to be using or one of them that we'll be using today so i'll show you how it works but that's really like i said i really love that it's got the larger outline one that you can use if you want to just cut the whole thing out or you can cut out the individual pieces and do uh, a little bit more collage you look which is what I did with this one um, or like I said if you just want the flowers you can do that or if you just want the acorns you can do that if you just want the little spriggy whatevers um, you can do that as well all right so that's it for the stamp and die set so let me slide this over and out of the way a couple other things that I used um, the stylish shapes dies which are kind of I don't know probably my second most used I don't know it's kind of a toss-up between between these two because I use them both and these are like my most used dies ever. Um, so this is the Stylish Shapes dies. These are in the annual catalog. They're a wonderful set of dies that coordinate with a lots and lots of different images as well as sentiments. So just get this if you don't have it you're going to want it anyway. And then we have the uh, stitched rectangle dies and I don't know how well it shows up on here with the I cut the two pieces of designer series paper on the background of this card with the largest of the stitched rectangle dies. All right, so that's it for the, the dies and things we're going to be using. I did want to remind you, celebration is going on right now. If you're not familiar with how that works, Stampin' Up! actually, for every $50 in merchandise that you order during celebration, which runs through the end of August, you get to pick a free item out of the celebration brochure. So Tanya's saying you had no idea. Okay, yes. And, and like I said, when I initially looked at the set in the catalog, I was like, eh, it's okay. And then I got the dies and I actually used them like, this is brilliant. So anyway, yes, I agree with you. Um, the one that was inside the uh, frame cuts out the, yes, yep, it cuts out the little, hold on. So the, uh, I, hopefully this is the question you're asking. So this actually cuts out this whole section of the flowers separately. So hopefully that's, um, that's what you were asking about is that one. And then there is a little one here that also cuts this little individual flower. So I don't know if that was your question or either way, there are dies that cut pretty much everything. So, all right. Um, so celebration, back to that. Uh, so inside, I can finally open up catalogs and show you the inside. So you get to pick free products for every $50 that you order. So the first couple of pages of them, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
and 9 and 10 actually are all available with orders of $50 or greater. And then they have a couple of things, the amazing phrasing and the tree lots dies and the wonderful world stamp set bundle, which is designer series paper and a stamp set. Those are only available with orders of $100 or greater. Or those are available, I should say, with orders of $100 or greater. So you can pick either two of the $50 items or one of the $100 items with a $100 order. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, and then there is in the back a host exclusive. So if you place an order of $300 or greater, or you host a party of $300 or greater, you get the perfect pomegranate stamp set for free. It's just an added little bonus that Stampin' Up! will send along with your order or party of $300 or greater. And then there is the joining promotion. They have this beautiful uh, Making Plans planner collection, which has got a stamp set, notebooks, uh, the actual planner itself, a whole bunch of pages and stickers and things to go inside to decorate up the planner. You get this for free if you join during celebration. Um, so you pay $99 for your starter kit. It ships for free and $99 plus tax if that applies in your area. It ships for free. You get to pick $125 worth of Stampin' Up! merchandise from the catalog, from the online store, wherever. And then they're going to throw in the free planner. So it's a great deal. It's always a great deal to be a, gem a demonstrator, but it's a really good deal during celebration. You get this awesome planner. So if you have questions about it or are interested in joining, um, holler at me. I would love to chat with you more about it. Um, once you join, you get at least a 20% discount on all the products that you purchase, so it makes it a really good deal. <laughs> and you get to order early from the catalogs and go to events and all the fun stuff. Okay, um, so back to the card. My original one, I have um, I had cut the card base to four and a quarter by 11 and scored it at five and a half. This one we're going to do with the middle fold or the book fold, so you can do it either way, whatever your preferred card base is. And then ahead of time, I went ahead and cut this piece of, this is actually from the Bows of Holly designer series paper, which I looked at that and I'm like, that looks kind of like, I don't know, birch-ish to me. I don't know if that's actually what they meant it to be, but... I thought it looked kind of birch and kind of fall. So I figured I would use it for this card for the background. And then this is from the um, Gingham Cottage Designer Series paper. This is, it's a huge, huge pack of like 48 sheets of 12 by 12 Designer Series paper. So there's tons of it in there. And this is one of the patterns in there. And we're just gonna stick these two together. It's pretty, all the paper in this catalog is really good. And even those of you that don't love the gnomes, the gnome paper is actually really cute too and has a lot of good designs that aren't gnome related <laughs> if you want to use them um, for something that doesn't have gnomes out of there. There's a lot of good snowflakes and that sort of thing. So just using a little stamp and seal, we're going to adhere the two pieces of designer paper together and then to the card front again with stamp and seal. And just going to try to get it centered top to bottom and side to side. And I think we got it pretty close. All right. Now onto the fun part to show you how some of these dies work. Okay, so this is um, <laughs> soft suede. I was trying to call it soft succulent and I'm like, no, Amy, that is not soft succulent. So I'm gonna take these two dies and actually what I forgot to say when I initially started talking about this is this is like a little interior die um, that hopefully you can see there are peaks of it here on my card. And these two work together. So you basically can run them through the die cutting machine all in one swing if you want to. I did find in my die cutting machine, each one is a little bit different with the, you know, the exactly how wide the opening is. I found that it worked better for me if I ran it through together and then lifted the outside die off first and then ran it back through again. So that's what I'm going to do um, as I'm die cutting this because the center pieces didn't all quite die cut on the first pass through. And sometimes when you're using two dies at once, it almost like the, the larger or the outline die kind of doesn't allow the machine to smash it down as much as it should, if that makes sense. So, um, so hopefully. All right, let me go run this through the die cutting machine over here off to my left hand side. And, oh. All right, so I ran it through together. Now I'm lifting off just the outline piece. So I've taken that off and I'm gonna run it back through again with just the inside piece in it. And hopefully we will get a good die cut here, which it looks like we got a pretty good one this time around. Now there are lots of little bits and things in it. And if I was smart, I would have grabbed my um, take your pick tool and put the brush end on it. But of course I did not. And um, so it's gonna take me a second, but we'll pick all those out. And of course I'm picking them off my uh, cutting plates over here too, so that I don't want to put those stuck all over everything else. 
but we'll just kind of do this. And actually the center of it, I don't need to worry so much about poking out all the little bits on that because it's gonna be covered up anyway. So we'll just kind of do the outside edges of it and not worry about doing too much in the center. Again, they're all falling out pretty easily. And if I had a dye brush and I was smart and I had grabbed that <laughs> or had it anywhere handy, which I do not, um, then I wouldn't be sitting here picking them out with my fingernails. But, all right, I think that's gonna be good enough. If there are any that we need to pick out as we add it to the card, I will pick them out then. Um, but I think we got eh, a couple of these, maybe little ones here on the flower I'll pick out. All right, we're gonna take that and then we are gonna adhere it to the card front. Maybe, <laughs> all right. So I'm gonna take that and actually I kind of turned it a little bit like this so that I've got some of it at the top, a little bit of it at the bottom and I'm just gonna use stamp and seal, put a couple little strips across here. Now again, I know that there are, you're gonna be able to see it through this die cut but that is just fine because um, the way that I have my card designed, it's gonna be all covered up with layers of other card stock so you're never gonna see that there's adhesive stuck here that I just stuck to my fingers. So I know, I need the poke tool. <laughs> <laughs> that's all yeah like I said I didn't I have none of it handy and I have to go run and get it so I figured fingernails will work for this one and Karen yes just get it you, then you won't be sad that's what I'm saying you know I I initially didn't wasn't terribly excited about it but because it was a bundle and I always buy pretty much all the bundles <laughs> um, I went ahead and bought it and then I got it and I'm like oh this is a good one all right so I've got basic white cardstock soft suede ink and this is that large image from the um, my mind is totally blank right now. The Fond of Autumn stamp set, and we're just gonna tap it on soft suede ink pad here. And again, when I'm not doing this on a camera and trying not to make you know the table wiggle terribly, I don't normally hold my ink pad up in the air and you know kind of fling it around like I just did. But uh, <laughs> I find that you get a little seasick if I'm banging on the table and wiggling it with a camera sitting on it. So I try not to, or I try to keep that to a minimum. All right, so we got Sahara sand that we've stamped that in. For my card today, I actually did not use the flower part of it, so we're not gonna color all of this. And I actually needed to do this two times for the card that I am making, but I'm not gonna sit and make you watch me stamp and color this two times, because that would be not very much fun. So, um, so I'm just gonna do it once and show you how I colored it, and the other one was done the exact same way. So I've got light, so saffron, and I'm just gonna take that and color over. Again, you'll see my fantastic coloring skills. Uh, just going to color over and again basically just getting color on the leaf at this point I'm not terribly worried about it being extremely even or really pretty or anything like that because I'm going to be coloring back over it again anyway um, so I'm just kind of wanting to get a layer of color on the card and again just coloring the larger leaves here with this is the light so saffron stamp and blends marker if I didn't say that already all right I'm kind of trying to get it out to the edges Hello, Bird's Nest Designs from Canada. Glad, yes, you'd need the bundle. Just get it, and then you won't be sad. <laughs> My coloring skills are the best. You crack me up, Karen. I know that they are not, but like I said, I just do, I do it quick and um, to what I think looks pretty to me. Whether it's perfect or not, usually it's not, but um, that was dark so saffron that I just kind of went through and traced over a little bit of the veins. Now I'm gonna take my light so saffron and I'm gonna come back in and this is where I sort of do like the cleanup job almost and just make sure that everything is colored, try to do a little bit of blending so that there aren't a lot of harsh lines in it. And that's kind of all that I do for the coloring, especially on an image like this where there are a lot of pieces and a lot of things to color. Um, just cause I kinda, like I said, I'm generally a lazy stamper and I try to get it done quickly and pretty. That's usually, that's what I'm always aiming for. <laughs> All right, so we've got the leaves colored on there. Now I'm gonna do the acorns. This is light and dark crumb cake. And I'm gonna start with the light and I'm just gonna color in the little body of the acorn. Is that what these are? I don't know, I'm sure there's some acorn term for it, but the lower part of the acorn. Gonna color those in. And just to add a little bit of the extra light here on the edge where there's already a shadow. And then I'm gonna use that also to color in the stems and these little berry things, whatever they are, look like um, good to color in crumb cake for me, <laughs> which I know that in real life they would probably be red or something that is not at all crumb cakey related, but I wanted it to be matchy matchy, so I went with crumb cake. So um, now I've got dark, 
uh, Chrome Cake Stampin' Blends, and that's what I'm gonna use to color in the top part of the acorn. And I don't know if you noticed, but you actually, I should have probably said that as I was starting as well. You can actually use the regular Stampin' Up uh, ink pads with Stampin' Blends because the ink pads are water-based and the blends are alcohol-based. So they will not pick up, it usually doesn't pick up the color and uh, make a mess of things and make it all smeary or anything like that. So you can use the regular colors so you don't always have to use Tuxedo Black Memento ink to stamp your images in um, if you're gonna be doing a little coloring with blends. Um, now you can't do that with water coloring, obviously, um, but the, it does work well with blends. So I've got the light pumpkin pie that I'm gonna be using here to add a little bit of color to these two larger leaves on here. And then I've got my dark pale papaya. Um, I started and originally had grabbed my dark pumpkin pie when I started this, and I colored actually the first leaf that I had on my card originally with pumpkin pie, and I thought it was too dark and too harsh. So I thought I wanted a little lighter look to it, so that's why I went with the pale papaya and mixed the two of those together, rather than, um, so I, it was light pumpkin pie and dark pale papaya that I used to color that one. So I use those, I know that technically they're not a pair, but they are close enough that they work. And then I've got my light pale papaya, and we're just gonna color in all these little leaves on here. And again, not worrying too much, making it look perfect. It's a natural image, which anytime you can do that, um, as if you're learning to use the blends, I always recommend starting with one of the you know, leaves, um, flowers, anything like that, where it doesn't need to be perfectly done. And um, they're very forgiving and really easy easy to color. Again, mostly it's just worrying about getting the color on it initially. Coming in and adding a little bit of the dark and you're good. Hey, Catherine, glad you're here. No worries about being late. We really aren't that far into it. I'm busy yakking and coloring. <laughs> so this card I knew was going to take me a couple minutes to get done. So I've got my dark pale papaya here. Just adding a little, little bit of dark pale papaya, kind of down mostly towards the center and anywhere where it looks like it's tucked underneath something. And then I'm gonna come back with my light pale papaya and again, just do what I like I did with the So Saffron and just kind of clean up the images a little bit, make sure that everything is colored completely and then do a little tiny bit of blending, not really even very much. And that's kind of it. Again, when you're, especially when you're doing this type of a collage image, um, there are so many colors and things going on that if one of your leaves isn't colored perfectly, nobody's gonna notice. All right. So that is it for the coloring. And again, I did that times two, so this one is already done ahead of time, so you don't have to sit and watch me color all that again. And then I'm gonna grab my die set again, and I'm gonna grab the divided set of dies, or divided die, I should say, this time. And I'm just gonna run it through the die cutting machine, get it lined up here, run it through the die cutting machine, not using the flowers, so I'm not worried about coloring those, and however they turn out, they turn out. So let me run this through the machine, and I will be back in a second. Hopefully y'all are enjoying your Tuesday. It's kind of a little warm and sticky here in uh, New Jersey today, but I guess it's summer, so I can't complain too much. All right. And I'm gonna grab all the die cut pieces here just to show you what they cut like when you use this die in particular. So we've got our acorns here, and then these are the two that are kind of the little branch or berry pieces. And then this is the flower set that we're actually not gonna be using, but that's how it cuts the flowers out. So you can do, again, you can do a couple of the flowers and group those together. You could probably use this more for a summer card. I don't know, I don't know the difference between fall and summer flowers, but if you colored them summer colors, I think you could get away with it and say, yep, yeah, that's cool. So, um, I love that. Like I said, Julia, the, when I initially saw this set, I'm like, mm, it's okay. I wasn't too excited. And then once I realized what it did, then I'm like, oh, this is a really good one. <laughs> so, all right. So let's bring the card back in here. And I'm going to grab some glue dots. Waiting for rain, thunderstorms in upstate New York. Yeah. We had a little rain a couple days ago. We haven't had much recently. So, but it's definitely sticky outside. So, all right. So I'm going to start by. Um, using glue dots, and I'm gonna try to keep them a little bit towards the center 
of my die cuts, and I'm just gonna put a couple of them on. Um, the only reason I'm keeping them a little bit towards the center is just because I'm gonna be tucking some of the little branches around and underneath, and I wanna make sure, oop, I got a spot here that little die cut didn't pop out. Um, and I wanna make sure that uh, I'm able to slide anything underneath that I need to, so we should be good on that. And I'm kind of looking at my original card and trying to get it somewhat close to what I did the first time. Then let me grab one of the little branch images here. And again, same thing, just gonna put a couple glue dots on the back of it. And I'm gonna tuck that right up here. And like I said, you know, all those little bits, whoop, I guess I have a glue dot that I put over the opening. Don't want that. A <laughs> Good thing for being able to roll up the little glue dots a bit. Um, like I said, you know, all those little bits and pieces in there that I was worried about, yeah, we're just gonna cover them up like that. Nobody's gonna know that they were there. Um, then I think I'm gonna take I'll, this one. I think I'm going to grab the one of these next. And did I stick it over? I stuck it over the opening again. I need to stop yakking and pay attention to what I'm doing. <laughs> so, all right. A couple little glue dots on there. Tuck that underneath here. And I think we'll go like that. And then I'm going to take this larger image again and stick that down on the bottom part of the card. And again, try to keep the glue dots so they're a little bit towards the center so that I'm able to fairly easily, whoop, not rip that. Whoopsie. Lord. All right, there we go. <laughs> it's stuck on. Let me grab another glue dot and stick it right over the top of that. There we go. Oh, and I'll just fling it right off screen while we're yakking. <laughs> All right, let me grab a third one, stick it on there. And then I think we'll kind of go on like that. Stick that down towards the bottom. And then I'm going to take the two remaining little die cuts. And I'll try not to stick anything where I shouldn't be sticking it. And tuck those up under here. Whoop. I'm going to probably tuck that one a little further because I want to make sure. Actually, I need to snip a little of this off because I want to make sure that it's not hanging over the um, edge of the card here when I stick it under because it was running into one of my glue dots that I thought I had so nicely centered that I had not. <laughs> and then I'll take my final little piece here, um, die cut piece, and we'll stick that right down underneath this side of it. Maybe, there we go. And I think I got all the things that I didn't poke out covered. I think I've got my adhesive all covered, so we should be good. All right, pouring in South Carolina. Ah. Yes, divided die. You definitely do need to get it for your next in your next order. It's a good one. Like I said, I was just not when I saw it in the catalog. The samples were kind of meh, and the, <laughs> I mean they just they weren't terrible. But it, it was just one that didn't catch my eye initially. And then I got it because you know it was a bundle, and I decided that I should get it. And yeah, once I got it, then I'm like, oh, this is it. I like it. So all right, got my embossing buddy from the little embossing toolkit that we now have, and I've got the autumn wishes on the block and Versamark ink. Um, the embossing buddy, I use that to try to remove any static from the cardstock that I'm stamping on, as well as any kind of oil from your fingers, which um, we all have that. So that um, causes sometimes your embossing powders to stick in sp spots where you don't want them to stick. And so if you rub over it a little bit with your embossing buddy, that uh, takes care of that. So I've got some gold embossing powder here in my little container, and we're going to take that and sprinkle it over the sentiment and do give it a little flick and make sure we got any of the extra stuff off which looks like we got a pretty good image here and i'm going to close that up before i uh, have that explode everywhere and i'm going to grab my heat tool so the stampin up heat tool you've probably heard me say it a billion times but it has two settings on it there's a level one setting for drying so if you're doing something like watercoloring or have an ink that's a little slower to dry and you want to speed it up you can use the level one setting Level two setting is for heat embossing, so that definitely gets hotter, but it does take it a minute to heat up. So that is why I'm yakking and um, holding it off to the side here so I don't burn myself or send things flying, uh, which I'm probably gonna send all those little bits flying the minute I turn this towards my, <laughs> my stamped image, but that's all right. All right, um, then I'm gonna turn it here and start the heat embossing. When you're heat embossing, you don't need to like zoomy zoom it or anything, but you do want to keep it moving a little bit so that you don't accidentally burn your embossing powder, which you can definitely do that. Um, it turns brown and not very pretty if you do that. Again, ask me how I know, because yep, I've done it before. <laughs> so um, 
Once it gets all done and is pretty and shiny, then you know it's all done cooking and you have to give it just a second to cool off. Otherwise it will, um, you can smear it um, because it's kind of a plastic type material um, that if it's still warm, you can smear it. And then it's again, you're stamping it a second time. So, all right, I have got my Stylish Shapes dies and thank goodness this little banner die fits perfectly around the Autumn Wishes. So we're gonna run this through the die cutting machine just like that. So I'll be off screen again for a second. Oh my goodness, I have little bits of uh, cardstock, the little soft suede everywhere. <laughs> I didn't realize I must have dumped a bunch of it all over my die sheet. I just dumped it all over my floor. <laughs> That'll teach me to do the uh, die cutting as I'm here instead of uh, cutting it ahead of time, but that's all right. Okay. All right, so we've got our sentiment die cut, but I'm fine with that because, like I said, I wanted to show you all how the dies work, so I didn't want to do it all ahead of time and have you, you know, not be able to actually see any of the fun stuff. Um, and I almost forgot to put on a little bit of uh, linen thread. I'm going to tie a bow. Um, so I'm not, again, excellent at bow tying. I do the little rabbit ears version where I make two rabbit ears. I cross them over, tuck it under, pull it through. And that's how I make my bows when they're kind of freestanding and are not <laughs> wrapped around anything. I do the same thing with ribbon because um, again, that's just makes a quick and easy bow. Some people actually, my, I was taught a completely different way to tie my shoes, but I do understand that some people that's actually how they're taught to tie their shoes. So um, I didn't realize that, but you can apparently tie tennis shoes and things like that as well. Um, all right, so I've got a little glue dot here and I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna stick it here on top of one of my die cuts and I'm going to adhere the, the bow to it. I probably should trim that off because it's not going to look very attractive to try to mail it with the <laughs> with the linen thread attached to it. And I'm probably going to trim this down a little bit since it's a little longer and more unruly than I think it needs to be. So there we go. Grab some Stampin' Dimensionals to adhere my sentiment onto the card front. Um, and the reason I did the glue dot where I did it is because I'm going to take the sentiment and I'm going to stick it right over the top of it anyway, so you're not even going to know that the glue dot is there. Um, so anytime that I have an opportunity to do that um, with the sentiment and want a little bow like that underneath it, that's usually what I do. So that, again, because I don't like to have sticky things in a spot where they get stuck on the envelope or anything like that. So I try to hide all the little, little glue dots and those types of things. Um, underneath a sentiment. So I'm gonna take that. And I, when I put my Stampin' Dimensionals on it, I actually stuck one kind of over to the left, left a little space here because I knew that that was where my bow was gonna land and then stuck two more on the other side. Um, so I'm trying to just make sure that I don't stick the, the um, Stampin' Dimensional right on top of the bow so that it's not a weird and lumpy sentiment because nobody likes lumpy sentiments. All right, um, last thing we're gonna put on the card front is a little bit of the, or a couple of the brushed metallic adhesive dots. And I used the actual gold ones this time. I'm gonna take a larger one and I think I will stick it in here. And then one of the smaller ones and I'll tuck that up here right next to it. And that's it for the card front. So pretty simple, pretty easy, beautiful die cuts. Definitely get this set because you're gonna love it. All right, on the inside of the card, I have got a little piece of the designer series paper that I trimmed off from the front when I made the, the card front. So this is, I don't know, half inch, five eighths inch. I guess it's closer to five eighths of an inch. Like I said, it was just a little leftover that was trimmed off. So, um, and I'm gonna take some stamp and seal and we're gonna adhere that to the bottom of the basic white panel here. And this is gonna go on the inside of the card. I'm gonna try to adhere it on here straight. All right, and again, just taking stamp and seal on the back. And we'll put that inside the card and we're gonna be all done for today. So, all right, stick this in here. Hopefully get it centered and straight. There we go, so that's the inside, pretty simple. Flip it closed and grab the bone folder and give it a good solid crease along the edge here. And that's it. So, Again, it's the Fond of Autumn Stamp Set Bundle. Um, it's in the July to December 2022 Stampin' Up! mini catalog. 
definitely get it. You're going to love it. It's really, really pretty. Um, really good die set, really easy to use. So just get it. Then you won't be sad. <laughs> all right. Thanks so much for joining today. I appreciate y'all being here. Yikes. I yacked on for a half an hour. Um, anyhow, I will plan to be live on my YouTube channel around two o'clock Eastern time on Friday, and then back here live around two o'clock Eastern time next week, Tuesday. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Um, again, all the details, which I probably forgot to say, all the details for this card will be posted on my blog tomorrow. I'll link it up um, in the description of this video tomorrow as well. So you'll be able to go back to the blog post if you want to go take a look at anything closer, look at measurements or anything like that. So thanks again, um, or find the printable PDF because I do those too. So there's a PDF tutorial for it that'll be posted with the blog post tomorrow. Okay, I'll stop yakking. Thanks so much for joining and uh, we'll chat with you all soon.